Hi everyone, I'm Chris Holbert, and in this screencast, I'm going to go through level or lesson two in the clock series in the Swift Education curriculum. So to find this, you want to go to swifteducation.github.io. You can click on the teaching app development with Swift link. Go through to level two, the clock lessons, and find your way down to lesson two. You will want to download the Xcode project and probably go through the MVC presentation. I'll start by going through the MVC presentation. Okay, Model View Controller is a really common design pattern that has been popularized in, in many programming environments over the years, and it's quite uh, prevalent in iOS development. So it's worth going through and learning a bit about it. So we've got an app that involves rockets and planets. In object-oriented programming, we like to think of things as objects that are real, that we can use and see and touch, because object-oriented programming is meant to mimic the real world. So here's our model objects. These are the real world elements. So we've got rockets and planets. And in object-oriented programming, things have attributes and they have behavior. In Swift, these are represented through instance variables or vars, that are the attributes, and behaviors are the functions. So you might have a rocket class, and a rocket has direction, velocity, color, location variables, and it'll have turn, accelerate, decelerate, fire laser functions. Views are things that you can see on the screen, and a controller is responsible for coordinating views and models. So say the user performs an input, the view will tell the controller, and the controller will tell the model, e.g. the rocket, hey, change your position. And here we can see how the controller is responsible for mediating between the view and the model when it comes time to draw the rocket on the screen. As you can see, models represent Swift classes quite well. And this is what a rocket would look like in Swift. Here's all the attributes, these are variables, and here's all the actions, aka functions. The view you may be familiar with as a storyboard. This is the app's user interface. Everything you can see and interact with on the screen. And the controller is a view controller, which you may have seen earlier as well. And so this is the nice diagram that explains how MVC all fits together. Basically, a controller sits in the middle with view and model talking through the controller, but not talking directly between the view and the model. All right, now let's open up the Xcode project. Okay, now let's find all the files in the Project Navigator. Here's the Project Navigator here. You can shortcut to it by, by using Command-1. And it's already selected, so that didn't do anything. And here's the main storyboard. As you can see, the label's already there this time. And if we run this, let's see what we get. As you can see, we get current time. If you followed on from the first lesson, you'll you'll recognize this is coming from the view controller's view did load. So let's see what the next step is. Okay, well firstly, we'll need a new model to represent the clock. So let's create a new class. You right click where you want to place it and do new file. We want to create a clock class. Now this is simply the name of the file. This doesn't affect the name of the actual class in the code. In the code, this is where we get to choose what it is called. Now typically, your class and your file name will, will match, but they don't have to. And in fact, you can have multiple classes in the same file. Generally, though, that's not a great idea unless they're particularly small classes. Okay, I'll show you how to use the documentation. You 
Now let's look up a thing called NSDate. In a state is the built-in class as part of foundation that handles dates and times, all these kinds of things. And essentially an NS date is a number of seconds since 2001 in Greenwich Mean Time or UTC, whichever takes you fancy. I'm sure there's a difference. As you can see, here's a documentation about dates and times has many methods you can use to create dates and so on and so forth. We're going to define a method that creates, that gets the current time. So func declares a function and the arrow means that it returns something. It returns an NS date and the empty parentheses where you would put arguments to this function, but this one has none. And we return a vanilla NS state. When you create an NS state with no arguments, it gives you the current date and time. One other thing that's worth going into is this camel case. Say you've got a function with multiple words, which is as it should be. You use this thing called camel case, where it is expressed as one word and you simply capitalize the first letter of every word. However, for functions and variables, the first letter is not capitalized. However, for types, e.g. classes, it is capitalized. So the way this current time function works is that every time you call it, it returns an NS date. The parentheses here indicate that it creates a new instance of an NS date and returns a new one every time. Now Swift has this thing called uh, computed property syntax. Rather than make a function that returns a time, we can make a computed variable that also returns the current time. Now computed property syntax is useful for things that look a lot like properties, but they are computed behind the scenes. So things you want to read or sometimes set. Quite often, computed properties are very popularly used for things that are get only, as in you can only read them. So this is how we can make this using computed property syntax. We say var, because it looks like a variable. We say what type it is, so use the colon, which you can read as is. So current time is an NS date, and in here, we can just return an NS state and get rid of the old function. Now, since this is getter only, we can just have the return in here. But if it was possible to set this time, you would have to split it up into get and set blocks like so. However, we're only going to make this read only. So we'll go back to that. Great, let's use this clock back in the view controller. So we'll make a new uh, instance variable. Now this one will be constant. So we'll use let instead of var. Its name is clock and its initial value is a new instance of clock. What we've done here, we've given it an initial value using the equal sign. And initially it'll be an instance of a new clock. Now the way this works is that every time a new view controller is created, just prior to your init method being called, if you have one, it'll go through all the all these declarations and assign them, and then it will run init. So every time you make a new view controller, you will have a new clock for that particular view controller instance, and that particular clock instance variable or constant will have a new copy or a new version of clock. I hope that makes sense. And now let's use that. So rather than using current time, we'll use this string interpolation syntax to 
pop in the clock's current time into the time label. And there you can see you have got a time, however it's formatted in the default way, which isn't really what we're after. But as you can see, we've got the current time. Okay, now let's um, work towards making the formatting a bit more nice. So there's this thing called an NS date formatter. I'll go into the documentation. NS date formatter. Now an NS date formatter is responsible for converting NS dates into readable strings. And uh, one of the most popular things that they're used for is converting things into pre-canned styles of dates and times using date style and time style. We're going to use time style. And the reason these are pre-canned is that they are also localized. So if you use a short, medium or long style, you don't need to worry about whether you're um, US English or British English or Japanese or whatever. It'll come out in a format that the um, local users will be able to understand. So that's quite handy. So what we want to do is get an inner state format, set its style to medium style, and uh, use it to convert our inner state that we're getting from our clock into a string that we can put in the label. Now, firstly, let's look at time style. Time style's type is an estate formatter style. An estate formatter style has is an enumeration. That's what the enum means. Basically, think of an enum as the gear selector in an automatic car. You can have one of many positions, such as drive, neutral, park, that kind of thing. In this case, we can have no style, short style, medium, long, and full. Now, when we set it, we don't need to type in a state formatter style. The Swift compiler is smart enough that it can figure out that that's what we want because we're talking about the time style. So all we need to do is type medium style with a dot before it. I'll show you how that works. So let's make an inner state formatter. Let's set its time style. And let's use it to convert our date into a string. Now let's run this. Fantastic. Now it's in a nice human readable format. Now in closing, we need to think about what happens if you start the app and then it shows the correct time, but then leave the app, put it to the background, go to some other things, and then come back an hour later. It'll still show the current time because we are only updating the label in our view did load. So that's not exactly what we want. We want the time to be continually updated. So we'll get to that in a future lesson. Thanks for watching.